Hello, Peter C. Hayward here doing another Soul Forge video. I thought I'd do a... Uh, I've had some requests to do a more educational draft. So I thought I'd do a draft where I explain all my picks. So this one might go long, but hopefully we'll all learn something. Uh, so let's go. I'm going to talk through every card I see. I have 101 tickets, so I'm going to use seven of them. This is my main account. This is not my free-to-play account. Let's go. Steel Forged Avatar. In draft, the avatars are pretty dreadful. Honestly, you don't want to grab them. They uh, at best become like a 15-15, and that's if you have all the right uh, faction, which you definitely won't. So never pick an avatar. Unless, yeah, no, just never pick an avatar. Uh, Sidifus Brawler is an okay card. It's really more of a blocker than anything. Uh, unless you build a deck around like getting them going so lots of lightning brands lots of flame soaked shamans and the trouble with a deck like that is that if you don't draw him you're left with a deck that has a lot of oomph with nothing behind it so i wouldn't pick that as a first pick unless unless the rest were all like avatars and other crap moss beard patriarch is a good support card but there is no need to pick him first he heals d t damage from creatures which there's no way to actually you know use that to win particularly um, unless you have a Shagrius, and if you have a Shagrius, then pick that over Mossbeard. Arian Battle Droid has 5 armor, 7 armor, 14 armor, so he's very nice against non Necrium deck, but a Necrium deck takes him out without even thinking. And honestly, most decks will, as long as they have at least 6, 8, and 15 attack, then they can block him straight away. Um, the only time you'd take an Arian Battle Droid is if you're going to go heavily Uterra and grow him big, uh, or possibly if you're going to go Tempest and give him extra health. So he's a card who really relies on getting the right support cards at the right time and again it means you have to build your deck around it whereas you want to basically pick a card that's strong by itself such as Zrath. Even if you have no other zombies he's a 5-6 with generate, 9-10 with generate, 14-15 with generate. If you have other zombies he gets he gives them regenerate although in the current uh, set there's not many zombies that have a lot of life so Zrath is not super useful in synergy but he's a nice card by himself and I would pick him if there wasn't a predator. Predator is nice. If you can draw him early each round, he's even nicer. Um, if you don't draw him in like round in play level one or two, then you're probably not going to use him at all. But you don't need to build deck around him. And at level three, he can quite easily win the game for you by just eating someone, moving over, and then uh, doing 20 damage. Can be very nice. So I'm going to grab Grimgaunt. Um, there's no contest there for me. Uh, Zarath is the second pick. Arian is a third pick, Cinefis is a fourth pick, Mossbeard five, and Steelforged I would never ever take. Uh, Steelforged works well in its own kind of little thing that it's got going on. So, we got some nice cards here. Cinefis is good if you're, uh, if you're worried about Shapers. He works really well against level two and three Shapers. Um, Lightning Worm is a pretty crappy card. Oh, I didn't pick that. No, no good. Lightning Worm is a pretty crappy card. Uh, if you need to pick him, you'll generally get him in the last two cards of a pack. And so you grab him just for the 4, 7, 11. Just treat him like a spell, basically, that does that much damage straight away while leaving a pretty crappy body on the board. Metasite, never have more than one of these. Uh, so he's definitely not an early pick. And Force Field is a keep this creature alive for one turn only card, which is not worth having. So here the Grove Huntress is a no-brainer for me. It affects multiple lanes because you can put it out and it can also screw up a trade. At level 3 those buffs get pretty amazing and he pairs really nicely with Grimgaunt. She, sorry, she pairs really nicely with Grimgaunt. So my pick here is Grove Huntress with Gemhide as a close second. The reason I'd pick a Gemhide is because he's rare as opposed to a common so I might not see any more of him. But frankly I would rather have a Grove Huntress than a Gemhide even if I don't see another one. Um, of these, Feral Instinct can win you the game at the very end. It can give a creature breakthrough, which can do that last little bit of damage that you need to do. So he's a nice card that I try to grab at least one of every time, uh, every every deck. Druid's Chant is a piece of shit. Never take that. Dark Heart Wanderer is meant to be good, but I have never managed to get it working, and I always kind of throw away my whole board position trying to because he relies on spells. And I really don't play very many spells. So for me, the pick here is Deepwood. If you play him in level two, then it's like having, I saw someone say this on the forum, it's like having a bonus level three. 16.8 is an amazing body. 18.10 is actually not much better. So you don't want to level him up from two to three that much. So if you play him during player level two, then you can pull him out of player level three as a big body who can trade with a lot of, uh, legend, a lot of level three creatures. Uh, but yeah, Feral Instinct is a is a close second, but I think I'll probably see another one. 
Here, Graveborn Glutton's a no-brainer, it's just a powerful creature at all levels that does bonus damage that can finish the game for you. Enrage is a nice card, it levels really well, and in draft, if you can get a level 3 Enrage, that's generally a win. It also goes well with my Grimgaunt, but as I said in my video yesterday where Gavin was here, he's not here today, he's probably asleep right now. Uh, it is very early in the morning, I woke up from a nightmare and decided to make a Soul Forge video. Um, Enrage goes well with Grimgaunt, but as I said in my video yesterday, I have stopped picking to complement cards and just made sure that every single hand I have a card that I'm happy with. I'm always happy with a Graveborn. Uh, now look, Net Touch of Blight uh, destroys a creature, it's level gated, it's horrible for various reasons, whereas Necrovive is also horrible, but the Regenerate pairs nicely with Grimgaunt, and I'm never taking a Touch of Blight, so Necrovive it is. Uh, regenerate 369, oh, 3612, so if you can get that on a Grimgaunt, then it can make it just keep on growing and regenerating health, and just be super cool and fun and funky. I don't like any of these cards. Uh, Soothing Radiance is shit. Touch of Blight I've already touched on. Feral Instinct I like, but I don't like getting it in a big pack because you'll generally see that later in a pack when you have uh, fewer options. So of these, the choices are Corpse Crawler, Glow Stride, Zombie. Zombie's a decent player at every level. I don't mind a zombie. Um, Glow Stride is... I used to like Glow Stride. I've really gone off it because it just can't take creatures out. That 3 seven, 11 is not enough to kill anyone and that health is not going to be worth sacrificing some board position. And Corpse Crawler requires you to kill a card, so I'm going to go with Zombie Infantry, but I don't love it. I like it, I don't love it. Um, Fangwood and Zillion are both really boring vanilla cards, so I'm going to skip them. Cull works well with the Grimgaunt, but I would rather have an Enrage, and I suspect I'll see a Cull later. Nether Embrace is another one of those cards that you never take if you can help it, although it can finish a game for you, unlike most of the never, finished, never take cards. That 4 damage from hand can win a game, but it's unlikely to, so I'd rather have an Enrage or a Cull. Um, look, I think I'll see Culls later, as I'm, Enrages uh, get snapped up pretty easily in drafts, so I'm going to take an Enrage. And here for me, the no-brainer is not Frankenbaum. Frankenbaum, I've tried, I can't get it to work. Like, I had a deck with uh, two or three Frankenbaums and a heap of abominations, and it still got its ass kicked, again, because his stats just aren't high enough. Hunting pack is known as playing the lottery, and it's almost never worth it, unless you've got a deck full of Tarsus. Uh, or... Yeah, I can't think of anything else. Tarsus is the only reason I'd ever play this. Or maybe if you had, like, a heap of lifeblood dryads, but... Um, I'm never gonna, I, I never grab a hunting pack if I can help it. Scavenger Scorpion has a decent body and regenerate, but he levels really badly. My games tend to go into play level like 5 or 6. So I'm going to take a Vengeful Spirit because it goes past armor, which is very helpful. And it just kills a lot of creatures really nicely. And if I'm forced to take a Corpse Crawler, it actually pairs okay with a Corpse Crawler. Uh, here's another really boring vanilla that I won't take unless I really have to, especially with its crappy level 2. Look at that, 7 and 8. What is that? Uh, Scavenger Scorpion I already dealt with. And Hungering Strike, I don't love taking spells, but this is actually one of the better spells as far as they go, and it is a rare, so I probably won't see it again, whereas I'm likely to, to have to pick one of these at a later stage. This guy can really screw up a trade, and he can make a, a Predator much more powerful. So I'm going to take Hungering Strike. Uh, and like I said, I don't like Frankenbaum, so I'm going to take... I've got three spells. I don't like having more than, you know, four or five spells total, but I really don't want to take a Frankenbaum, so I'm going to take a Cull the Week. Here are some nice cards. Um, Oxidon Spitter. If I wasn't in Necrium, I'd definitely take that, because being able to take out armor is really helpful. Enrage, I've already said, is quite good. Charnel, I like in Draft a lot, uh, especially against Aloyan or... Probably, yeah, Aloyan, maybe... Uh, Uterra, maybe Necrium. You ge generally don't play it against Tempest. Um, Ghost Scale is okay, but I'll probably see one of them later. Deep Branch is one of the worst heroics. Don't take a Deep Branch unless you've got nothing but, like, uh, Sowers and... Yeah. Deep Branch is very reliant on the perfect board state, and that's unlikely to happen. Whereas Dark Shaper is just a lovely, lovely, lovely card, and I'm very happy to take that. It pairs well with uh, my Grimgaunt. I've got mostly Necrium, so it works really well with that. There's many reasons to take the Dark Shaper there, so I'm going to grab him. Another another deck I'm not, another hand I'm not crazy about, but I've already got way more spells than I want to, so I'm just going to take the creature. Uh, he levels... Okay, look, he's a totally, totally vanilla card. 
He's like the ultimate vanilla card. He's almost a 5, 10, 15, which is your base Soul Forge stats. Uh, but just have a look around. If I wasn't in Necrium, Toxic Spores would be an okay pick because it's a nice bit of removal. Druid's Chance, horrible. Never take it unless you manage to score an Aborus. Uh, Noxious Cloud levels really nicely, but still not worth taking, especially when you compare it to stuff like Pyre Song or Epidemic. Uh, and Primal Surge is a free spell, which is nice, but not worth taking at the moment because I've already got way too many spells. Uh, here I really... So Necrovive I've already talked about, Nether Rest I've talked about, Fangwood I've talked about, Marrow Fiend is a really lovely level 1 blocker with 8 health, which goes nicely with a Dark Shaper. So I'm definitely taking that. So I can drop him at level 1, trigger Dark Shaper, and do 8 damage to a creature. Uh, Contagion Surge I actually like. Kit put me onto this. Um, you can use this to take out an Arian Battle Droid. Everhounds, I also don't mind. It fills up some lanes. Enrage, I've already got. So let's toss up here. Uh, I'm going to take the Contagion Surge because it's rare and I don't think I'll see it again. But like I said, I've got way more spells that I'm comfortable with. And just because it's not a spell, I'm going to take Ghost Scale. It also levels really nicely. And you can actually do some cool combos with a Predator. But as I said, I'm not building my deck around that Predator because I might not get it. Uh, Fellwalker is a good is a good chump blocker. It can block twice in a row and actually do some damage in the process. Necrovive, I've already got, I've talked about. Feral, I've talked about. Nether, I've talked about. Necrotic Worm. And Charnel, I love in this pack. I'm going to happily take a Charnel. Um, here, the toss up is. I've already talked about all three of these and I've already got a Grove Huntress. So I'm going to take a Venom Fang. A, because it's rare. Secondly, because it affects two lanes, which I like in a, in a like killing way, which is always fun. Uh, but if it wasn't here, the Grove Huntress would be a no brainer. And here, I actually like Spectre a lot, because it's strong level 2 and 3. There's another one that you can kind of play and then almost ignore the level 2 until you get to play level 3. Uh, having said that, if there wasn't there, I'd probably take a Necrotic Worm, though another Hungering Strike is definitely tempting. Um, oh, look, I don't like any of these cards particularly, but I like Strength the most. I've got too many spells. Uh, I'm not taking a Hunting Pack. Cadaverous Thicket is just, uh, like, if you need to take it, take it, but you rarely need to take it. So I'm going to take a Strength, because it does buff your creatures in a fun way. And I'm going to take a Gemhide Basher. I've already talked about Noxious Cloud. Oh, yes! I like getting a free Heroic, such as an Epidemic, uh, which pairs really well with my Grimgaunt and with my Dark Shaper, and is just generally a great card. Minus 2, minus 4, minus 6. I'll almost always take an Epidemic if I see it, even though, as mentioned, I've got way too many spells. Uh, Restless Wanderers, you never take. Just never... Like, in draft, you're not going to get more than one of them. At best, you might get three if you're crazy lucky, and even then it's not worth taking. Fang would have... And, yeah, the rest have all talked about, so I'm taking an Epidemic. Uh, I like Tarsus a lot. It's got a strong body. I don't have anything that pairs with it at all, but just for the strong body alone, I think I'm going to take that. Uh, Deep Branch would be my second pick, just as a strong level one blocker. And that breakthrough can win games, especially with the buffing cards I've got. But uh, Zillion Hulk's just a vanilla, and the other two I've talked about, so I'm going to take a Tarsus, mainly for the body. I'm probably not going to use this activation at all, unless I fluke a Flesh Fiend or Death Seeker. Uh, yeah, so here I'm probably going to take the Death Seeker. Uh, I've got the Tarsus. I mean, it's not much of a support, but... Uh, Natural Selection is the kind of the card that you never, ever, ever take if you can avoid it. Um... I might go through and rank all these cards that you don't take at one point, but in this pack it's a choice between Death Seeker and Corpse Crawler. Corpse Crawler has a better body, which I like, but it requires you to kill a creature. Uh, and I'd rather do that after I have a... I'd rather take one of those after I have a Death Seeker or two in my, in my deck. Death Seeker is pretty uninspiring, 5, 9, 14, but um, if I can get it working with a Tarsus it immediately pays off. Uh, Lightbringer Cleric I like. It's just, it's your standard 5, 10, 15 with a bit of bonus health. Uh, but, again, I'm going to take a Marrowfiend with the same synergy as earlier. Also, if I'm going to be using one of these, probably going to be using it as a blocker. And I'd rather have the 8, 11, 17. And, because I hate this card more than anything, I'm taking a Bramblewood Guardian, but I'm not happy about it. Uh, Fido Bomb is an okay card. It works well with the Tarsus, but I'm unlikely to pull that exact combination, and I'd rather not put another spell, because I've already got seven, which is four or five more than I'd like to have. With a Frost is a nice little anti-armor card, and I don't have many of those at the moment. I've only got the one uh, Venge Vengeful Spirit. So I'm going to take a With a Frost, but Grove Huntress would be a solid choice, and I've already spoken about the others. 
Uh, this is another uninspiring deck, so I'm just going to take a creature. I've talked about all these cards, and 135. I'd rather have a creature of 257 than 135, even if it will survive a bit longer. Either way, I'm, I'm put like, yeah, this is a blocker that's probably going to kill in a turn or two. Um, look, because I'm running high on spells, I wouldn't mind taking a Scavenger Scorpion. Uh, Gloom Reaper, which actually pairs pretty nicely with both Dark Shaper and Hungering Strike, but I'm unlikely to get that exact perfect combination. Uh, having said that, it levels better than a Scavenger Scorpion, so I'm probably going to grab it while being aware that I don't have many good level 1 cards. So I'll see if, if, I, if I see any good level 1 cards, I'll take them. Fellwalker is a nice chump blocker that goes well with Tarsus now, so I'm going to take that. Gravegast is pretty average at all levels, even with Regenerate. Um, I do have a lot of buff cards, but I'd rather just have a good card than take a crappy card that I have to buff. And Strength in Numbers I like, but I've already got one. So Fellwalker there for the synergy and just the delaying tactic. I really want a delaying deck, just because I've got the, uh, the strong kind of level 3 cards and not many strong level 1 cards. And because it's facing a dru druid's chain, I'm going to take a Grimgaunt. I really like Grimgaunt's level 2. Let's go! I suspect... My prediction here is that this is a 2-1 deck. I don't think I'm going to 3-0 on this. I don't have enough oomph in it. But I might get very lucky, I might get very unlucky. Who knows? My guess is a 2-1. Um, my strategy here will be to ideally play my Shaper and my Grimgaunt Predator early. Uh, but based on what I get, I'm just going to level some cards so I stand a chance in play level 2, because uh, with the cards that I've chosen, play level 1 I think I'm going to suffer during. Although, my Charnel grows off that, which is very nice. And I've got a Shaper, so I'm probably going to Charnel in centre row, so it trades with either a uh, Nexus Pilot, because he's playing a Loyan. So, let's, let's, let's talk through this. Sorry, little evil 666. What a name. Uh, I'm just going to explain. So, he's played a Loyan, which tells me a few things. Firstly, uh, He's probably he's playing a late game deck because he's techno smith something. Secondly, he's going to want to want that middle row for either a uh, battle battle tactician or a nexus pilot, and that's all it really tells me. But and because I am going against a lion, I might want to level up my anti armor deck cards. But dark shaper is an anti armor card, so I'm going to play that here. It trades off for uh, leaving me with a four four, which I'm pretty happy with. And then a Charnel Titan in the centre row means that if it plays a Nexus Pilot, I can one for one it, which is actually not very common. And if he plays a Battle Tactician, I get a free... I get to kill it for basically free. Now, arguably, I should have left that Techno Smith for my Grimgaunt Predator to eat. And had I been thinking about it a little bit more, I probably would have. But it's okay. Uh, I regret that. <laughs> cool. So currently Grimgaunt Predator eats that alone in general, which I'm pretty happy with. It takes a while to get there, but it does it. And at this stage, I could play Hungering Strike just to make the Grimgaunt take no damage and have a higher, have a, a bigger attack. But because I've seen armor here, I want to start leveling up my anti-armor card. Uh, because otherwise I will not stand a chance against said armor. So I'm just going to play this into an empty lane, which is not an ideal play, but I'm okay with it. Currently I've got a little bit of board position. I've got a threat on the board, which is nice. Um, that's not a particularly inspiring hand. What I could do, depending on what he plays, is I could play Contagion Surge on the Alone General, making that a free card for the rest of the game, and then Gloom Reaper to kill it for free and boost my Grimgaunt Predator without him taking any more damage. Uh, the advantage of that is that I make this card free for the rest of the game. Oh, I can't do that anymore. Ah, that's annoying. <laughs> Uh, so he's playing Weirwood, which in my opinion is the strongest card in all of Draft and probably the whole game at the moment, if I'm being honest. Uh, which makes me a little bit worried because I don't have much to go against the Weirwood. I'm still going to use this Contag... Oh no. So I could use a Contagion Surge to kill that before it does any damage. Or I could use a Venom Fang to poison it. Weirwoods rely on filling up a lot of lanes, so I like the idea of playing a card that deals with two lanes at once. Uh, so I'm going to do that. And then because I'm going against a deck that'll be very strong in level 2, we would trade with every single card except for one in level 2. So I'm going to actually play this one to give myself a better chance at level 2. I could conceivably level up any of these and that would be an okay move, but I want to have the strongest chance at level 2 that I can. And that just means 
building up board presence to level one and leveling good cards. So here, for instance, I want to save those Marrow Fiends because they will be really nice during play level two, which means I'm either going to play a Zombie, Grove, or Ghost Scale. Obviously, it's going to be based on what he plays, but a Gro Grove Huntress... Ah, see, I wanted to take that out before I could do anything. Um, Grove Huntress can screw up a trade, like this trade right here, so I'm going to do that. And... I don't love any of these, so I'm just going to go for leveling a card, uh, playing a card that just levels really nicely. Although, so I've got choices here. I can either play a Marrow Fiend, which I don't really want to do. Um, I can play a Zombie Infantry to give me a chance at drawing better cards at the play level 2. Or I can play a Ghost Scale Cobra, which is a crappy card, but means when I draw it at level 2 it's not necessarily a dead drop. It does equivalent of 10 damage. So I'm actually going to go with Ghost Scale. It's not the strongest play in the world. You could argue for any of these, I feel, but um, I just want to make sure that I've got the best possible hands in level 2, and that's the play that does that for me. So now I'm really hoping he plays something with at least... with uh, with no more than 5 attack, such as the Alloyan General I saw earlier. Or, uh, nope, Sapling's going to die, so that's not useful. Here we go. So another Sapling. So I can play a Charnel now and have a decent body on the board. Takes out a Bright Tusk and survives. And then, then we're in a sort of six of one, half a dozen of the other situation where I could play a Tarsus to have a decent body on the board and level up my Tarsus. I could play a Contagion Surge, that would be pointless, doesn't do anything. Death Seeker is a card I don't love, whereas if I play Eventual Spirit then it means I can continue to be uh, relevant, relevant against his armour, which I want to do. So the question is do I play it here and just trade it, or do I play it here so if I play it here, I kill the Nexus Pilot, which is not actually a huge threat. Whereas over here, I take out a Bright Tusk, which I can't otherwise take out. Uh, and any level 1 card can basically take these two cards out. Yeah, I'm going I'm to play it against the Bright Tusk. Um, the Bright Tusk will slowly die, but I'd rather uh, kill it before it does too much damage to me. Here's my Grimgorn. I'm very happy to see him. I could also play a second Grimgorn against this Sapling, unless he draws his Wildwood. <coughs> uh, and that would level up that, so I'd have some more decent level two, uh, level 2 cards coming up. Depending on his play, Bramblewood might even be the play here. It's not great at level 2, but it levels better than a Grimgorn does. I'll see what he plays. Okay, cool. So I definitely want to take out this Nexus Pilot. And if I play my Grimgaunt Spectre... And that levels up. And this guy actually survives, so he can move over and take a chunk out of the Alloyan General. I feel like my voice is breaking. Um, so there's an interesting little predicament to be in. Uh, I can possibly disable another card. Okay, so I could play an Enrage on my Grimgaunt Spectre. I really like leveling up Enrage. It gets really big really fast. Um, with a f uh, the Hunting Pack, I'm not really worried about. And Technosmith I don't care about. So, what I can do is I can play an Enrage on my Grimgaunt, move him over here and take out that Alloyan General. And then before it even gets a chance to attack, I can kill off this Hunting Pack, leaving me with a crappy card on the board, but a card on the board nonetheless. And in the hope that I draw my um, Grimgaunt, he's got something to actually eat. So this puts me in an okay position. There we go, Grimgaunt. And I can immediately buff it with a Grove Huntress, which I'm very happy about. So that'll be a... That'll get plus 4, plus 4, making it 13, 13. Minus 2, 13, 11. Plus 3, plus 3 is 16, 14. So that's going to be a huge card straight away, giving me a really decent threat and levelling up two cards that I really want to level right before we go up. So I'm very happy with that, uh, with that draw. Uh, that is okay. I don't know why he would jetpack it and then not move it. That's strange to me. So it means that my Predator takes a little bit more life than I want him to, but I'm totally okay with that. And because I know that he does have a Weirwood coming up, I'm actually going to block this Spark Blade just so it can't grow. Or if it does grow, it still dies. 
So having a 1611 is nice. That's a pretty nice hand, especially if I can grow that Charnel. So he just needs anything with, I think it's less than seven. Yeah, any card on the board with less than seven makes him grow. Ah, such as that one. So I can move over and eat the tree folk, unless he plays a second level Weirwood. Uh, so my Charnel trades off with that Bright Tusk. Oops, it's my alarm to wake up. So I get to grow my tree folk, which I like. I get to, sorry, grow my Grimgaunt on his tree folk. I get to grow my Charnel on his tree folk. And just in the interest of having threats on the board, I can play a Spectre right now. Or I could start leveling up one of these other guys. I think I would rather have a, a decent level 3 on the board than level anything up at the moment. Because I've got, I've got enough threats that I could conceivably turn this into a... Um, oh, that's a nice draw. Uh, I could conceivably like snowball this to a win. So unless he kills this Grimgaunt right now, I'm going to grow it again with an Enrage. He kills it right now, that's okay. That happens. I didn't actually get to do any damage with him, which is a pity. Um, so here I probably just want to level some cards. Ah, oh, that Epidemic would be really nice to level, but I just don't know if it's actually worth it at this stage. I might go Epidemic... Mm. No matter what, I'm not putting much of a body on the board, so I might as well... I could level the Enrage. I think I'm going to Epidemic Enrage, because that takes out his Alloy in general straight away leaving him with a 3-3 Tree Folk instead of 11-3 Tree Folk. Uh, I'm pounding through a little bit of damage with my Charnel, and I would really like to level both the Epidemic and the Enrage. I'm actually going to leave his 1-1 there, his 3-1, in the hope that uh, my level 3 Predator can eventually eat it. Ha-ha! This is why you do that. He's probably going to replace it in his shoes, I would, unless he can buff it like crazy. Um, so, ideally that stays as a 3-1, I can just eat it and have a 20-17 on the board. That would be very nice right now, because I have a lot of board advantage. Uh, if he replaces it, fair enough. If he grows it, I'll probably still eat it with a Grimgaunt, because that's still worth it. That's okay. I don't mind that at all. Leaves me with a 20, 220... A 27 and a 2013 on the board, both with mobility. And just to top it off, I'm just going to keep on being mobile and hoping I can uh, turn this into a win. So he has, to, he has to start blocking these before I dodge around and do some damage. Um, here my play is almost certainly going to be Vengeful Spirit Graveborn, unless a Marrow Fiend kills something Graveborn doesn't. Tarsus, I think it's a bit late for Tarsus. Uh, actually, Vengeful Spirit's not great in the current situation, is it? If you play something with armor... Ah, see, now he spent his time leveling up this card, which is not a very good card to level. So it's put him in a serious disadvantage at level 3. Cool, so Vengeful Spirit in front of that eats it. Very happy with that. This is why you level up your anti-armor cards. And then a Graveborn Glutton just, to, Glutton just to keep on pounding damage through. So it does 6 damage, and when it dies it does a little bit of damage. Should be able to turn this into a win, unless he gets very, very lucky. Strength in numbers can potentially keep my Grimgaunt alive for a bit longer, or make my Grimgaunt Spectre... Ha-ha! There we go. So, that is a game. I hope that was educational. Um, I'm going to play the other two, but uh, I'm going to be less... Oh, no, I'll keep on. I'll keep on being educational. Why not? I'll be as educational as I can. Let me know if there's anything that I'm doing that you don't understand, anything that you want to learn. Uh, this is the most educational focus video I'm going to do for a while, so I'll keep on explaining all my thoughts as I have them. Uh, a lot of it is really just knowing the cards, so if you want to learn the game, just play a shit ton of it. Play on random queue so you see different cards and know how to go against them. Play against the computer so you know how to play optimally. Uh, and then the drafting, it's, it's barely worth drafting, no, it's not barely worth, uh, you're not going to 3-0 consistently in drafting until you have a really encyclopedic knowledge of every card, and then you have to have a really strong knowledge of which cards you'll see again in draft. Cool, so he's playing a rush deck, um, which is bad for me because I have a really, really weak level 1. 
So I'm going to play a Vengeful here because it's the only card in my hand that actually kills it. And in the interest of surviving level 2, I'm going to play a Grimgold Spectre. Uh, even when it's not meant to be, red is almost always a rush uh, faction. Red is just really good at pounding that damage through. I like this hand a lot. I like seeing an Epidemic this early. Oh, double Shapers. Interesting. So, because I've seen two Shapers, I'm going to distinctly remember to level up my Gem Hide Basher so it can take out either one of these level 2 and 3 without um, breaking a sweat. Uh, Epidemic turns this from a loss into a trade, and I want to level up the Epidemic, so there's two good reasons to do that. And since it's probably the most powerful card I have at the moment, I'm going to play Graveborn because it kills that and survives. He has the potential to screw me up with a Ferocious Roar, but even then they all still trade. Uh, there's the gem hide, so I'm levelling him come hell or high water. And then probably a Venom Fang. Venom Fang just to deal with two lanes at once, and he's filling multiple lanes. Oh, look at that. you got a deep branch to work. That's the card I said would never work, and it did. Uh, so in the interest of I want to delay this, so I'm actually going to play a... So Gemhide, when he's against a creature, goes straight away. I don't want that. I want him to have to take... Uh... I want him to have to take my Gemhide out on his turn. Because if he takes it... If I take it... If I attacked... If I'd played this before battle... Whew, he would have attacked and then died, meaning I would have taken 8 damage from his Deep Brain Ancient. And there's no advantage to that for me, so I'm just going to play a gem hide, running the risk of him uh, killing it with like a lightning spark or something like that. Here I really like Shaper and Tarsus. Now Venom Fang's poison means that he'll just die of his own accord pretty quickly. Uh, Shaper and Tarsus to take out some cards. Shaper trading with the Deep Branch. He's going to be on one health, but I'm, I'm okay with that. And Tarsus over here, killing the Windborn and not really breaking a sweat. Unless, of course, he has a lot of mobility, which, because he has a Windborn, he probably does. Etherhound is now dead from my earlier attack. I don't like any of these cards, except for the Graveborn, so I'm probably just going to level an Enrage, because I'd really rather have an Enrage level than a Ghost Scale at this point. Oh! Legendary! Nice one, too. Damn. Double the attack of every other creature you control. If he gets that out, I am in a lot of trouble. So with that in mind, I really want to kill that Shape Bar before it can do 8 damage to me, instead of just 4. And I'm definitely going to Graveborn in front of the Abraxas to try to kill it as quickly as possible. It is level-gated. Ah, crap. There's a lot of threats on the board right now. Um... This is probably the bigger threat, because I can't actually kill it with any of these cards. I'm just going to take out the card that I can kill. I would have rather level up the Enrage, but hopefully I'll just draw a level 2 that can deal with that Ashurian Mystic straight off the bat. Not really, but sort of. Um, Marrow Fiend kills it. This is why I have the Marrow Fiends to play as, level, as half decent level 2 cards. Oh my god! Ouch! I'm in trouble here. There is naught I can do about these various threats. I can at least kill the Asherian Mystic. He gets a free kill of my Graveborn with his Flame Shaper, and because it's the only other fucking creature I have in the in the hand, I'm gonna play this guy in front of the Gloom in front of the Shaper. Uh, he'll probably kill it with a trigger, but the alternative is playing it here where he oh that's nice. Um, by playing the Gloom, Gloom Reaper here, four of the damage still goes through, so it really doesn't do that much. Whereas here it means he has to waste a trigger on it if he wants to... Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, so he didn't actually trigger his Flame Shaper, but now he has a Life Shaper. Fortunately, I have a Gemhide Basher, which deals nicely with Life Shaper. And my Epidemic kills... Uh, doesn't do anything about that Deep Branch, which is alarming. But it kills the Shaper and brings him back down to a 7-7. Four! Okay. I have to draw very lucky from here on in. Dark Shaper I love. I love you, Dark Shaper. Dark Shaper plus Wither Frost actually kills him. Dark Shaper trades with that Asurian Mystic eventually. And, yeah, no, I'm happy with that. 
So I at least get to clear the board on 44 health. That is not very nice. But at least I have a level 1 with a frost left on the board. Um, this is not ideal either. I had to level up that Gloom Reaper, didn't I? Gloom Reaper is not going to be great against Tempest. Tempest is all about the attack. It's very unlikely that he puts out a 4 or less attack creature on the board for me to get a free kill off. Although, I forgot he was also playing... Cool, Glacial Colossus I don't care about. He's not playing a Loyan so he can't jetpack it. Uh, if you don't know what these cards are, this is what I'm saying, you really have to know the... Um... That was actually a weird play. I don't know why he did that. He has no way of actually turning that into a kill. Hmm. But I get a free kill of this Glow Stride, which I'm very happy with. And I am going to... Need... Oh, crap. Yeah, I need... I need to have some bodies on the board to deal with his Asherian Mystics. And a Grimgaunt Spectre. Oh, right, I haven't seen my Grimgaunt at all. My Grimgaunt Predator, I mean. It's probably too late to start leveling him, but considering the rest of that hand, I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, Venom Fang is 2 poison, which means that that Life Shaper doesn't die. So it's probably going to yeah, start triggering some... So he gets Free Killer with a Frost. And he's got... Okay, so they trade. I'm happy with that. I'm actually going to move my Grimgaunt Spectre just to... Because there's no point in bashing, it's bashing my head against this. I move it to the left, by the way, so that I have two lane options when these two die. If I move it to the right, then he can put something there and effectively block me because I can't go over there. I'm going to poison the Life Shaper. And even though it is far too late, I am going to play my Grimgaunt Predator. What? I don't want you. Go away. Uh, just in the hope that the game goes to... It's unlikely, but in the hope that the game goes to play level 4 or 5, I can get a, a pretty decent Predator out. Um, so now after this attack, he'll be on 5 health, so I can move my Grimgaunt over and just kill him off entirely. Otherwise, I can gem hide it. If he plays a level 3 uh, Flame Shaper, I can gem hide that. Ah, always with the Assyrian Mystics. And that, I'm not too bothered. Oh, right, that I'm really fucking bothered by. Shit. That's, that's huge. That's doing a lot of damage, and I'm not able to kill it very quickly. Uh, oh, yes, I am. I can go... Let's see. I can... Yeah, it doesn't really matter. So the order I want to do this in is Spectre first. The reason the order matters here is because if he draws a level 3 Flame Shaper, that does a 7 trigger damage, so that can actually kill this before it does anything. So I don't want to make this the guy left on the board. Even though it would mean I get to do 11 more damage, I'd rather definitely kill that fucking Mystic. Almost definitely. And still have a Shaper on the board. That puts me in a pretty good position. Not great, but pretty good. Uh, especially with this lovely hand. So I've got two decent level 2 um, Necrium cards, which means I can trigger the Shaper twice, hopefully gaining me some board control uh, and leaving some bodies on the board. So if he puts anything in front of uh, this guy with 10 or less attack, I get to kill it for free, or I get to severely weaken some other creatures. What I'm most afraid of now is something mobility, because that does 19 damage straight away makes him bigger and harder to kill and leaves me on 10 health which would be very nasty so that's an aerial surge fervent assault uh oh damn he planned to win now as i said i can actually use these to just kill that flame shaper for it before it even does anything uh i'm gonna use the marrow fiend to trade i think again just because i want to guarantee that thing dead in case he draws some mobility this turn and where to play this is actually an interesting choice. If I play it, because uh, this guy's going to die, so I can play it any of these three spots. I'm going to play it over in the corner, so that if I do draw something with mobility, like a, um, a Spectre, I can place him here, and he can move left or right when that Shaper dies. Or he can move left or right when that Tarsus dies. Oh no! Oh no, no, no! I triggered the... Uh... Oh shit, that was really dumb! I triggered the Asurian instead of the Flame Shaper. Ah, okay, that might have lost me the game right there. I didn't even notice it was happening. Because now he can do four free... Oh, that's such a nice hand. 
Okay, I think I've just lost myself the game accidentally, which is pretty dumb as you can imagine. Because uh, now we can play a level 1 red card and do 11 damage straight to me. Shit. That was really fucking stupid, just for the record. Really dumb. Uh, I'm pretty annoyed about that at myself. I would rather not have to play these in this order because now a level 2 Ashurian gets double attack, which is right now pretty big. Um, in an ideal world, I can play a Grimgaunt and then. Oh, if. Okay, assuming he puts no threats out, which is very unlikely, I can play a Grimgaunt in front of this Glacial Colossus and then a Gloom Reaper to kill it and immediately buff my Grimgaunt. I'm hoping he plays something with 7 attack here or here. Here, actually, that's the only place I really want it. Um, my Grimgaunt also gives someone a minus 5, minus 5. So I can play my Grimgaunt, hopefully bring it down to 7 or less health, and then play the Gloom Reaper, assuming my Dark Shape is still alive, which is pretty likely at this stage. Uh, so that was a pretty severe misplay by me. Hopefully it hasn't lost me the game, especially with this actually incredible hand. Because, uh, yeah, I get to kill a creature, assuming that uh, it plays out the way I'm, I think it will. I get to kill a creature, level my Grimgaunt, and buff him, and play a Gloom Reaper all in the same turn, which is a pretty nice turn, as you can imagine. That I'm not too bothered by, because they actually evenly trade. That I'm very bothered by. That's really bad, because I don't have the health to spare. So what I'm going to do is... Um, if I play Grimgaunt, then I bring that down to a level where I can actually kill it with a Flame Shaper, with a, with a Gloom Reaper. But that leaves this Asurian Mystic alive, which I don't want to do for obvious reasons. What I could do is I could just play these two. So I could play a Wither Frost here, giving that minus 4, minus 4, making it a 10, 12. And then trigger this, making it a 5, 7, which trades with a Wither Frost. And then I can play a Grimgaunt Predator, bring this down to the level where my Dark Shaper kills it. I think that's optimal play at this point. It does leave a body on the board, which I'm worried about, but I it gets me a lot of board presence, which I'm very happy with. There's a lot of math in this game. As well as that, I'm doing 17 damage, so the only real risk here is something like a a Lightning Spark or a Pyre Song, which is honestly pretty likely considering the uh, the colours I'm playing against. Epidemic here is nice but not amazing. It would have been nicer last turn. Uh, he's probably just going to throw creatures of this to kill him. Okay, so now Epidemic kills that Shaper, which I'm very happy about. Ah, oh, and now he can trigger this to get another 5 damage through, which is bad, but it means my Epidemic kills both these cards, which is sort of nice. Yeah, so he's going to hit that and then do 5 damage, leaving me on 7 health. Unlikely I'll win this, but still possible. Especially because my Grimgaunt's going to grow from killing that Ashurian Mystic. And I'm going to do, what's that, 7 to... 4 to 12 damage. So I've got a shot here. Not much of a shot, but I do actually have a shot. And... I've got no great choices, so yeah, anything kills me at this stage. He just needs to draw any good card and I'm dead. But I'm going to play a Deep Wood because it levels better than the rest of them. But yeah. He's on 9 health, but he's playing uh, Tempest, which means that any good card kills me. How is this worded? While there is another creature in this lane, Jemhai Basher gets aggressive. So if you play it and there's another creature, it gets aggressive, and then if you kill that creature, it loses aggressive, I'm pretty sure. But I've never tested that, and I'm curious. Um, Hungering Strike, if that was a plus 4 instead of a plus 3, that could actually win me the game right now. But it's not, so it can't. <laughs> uh, if he plays a level 3 Shaper and then triggers it, I die. If he plays an Ashurian level 2 or 3, I die. Almost anything kills me at this stage. All he has to do is block this Predator. If he can't block the Predator, if he's managed to draw all level 1s and he can't block the Predator, I win. But that's very unlikely. That's very optimistic. <laughs> uh, my strongest plays here are almost certainly Gemhide Basher and... 
Death Seeker, just because it fills the lanes for a tiny bit longer, but neither of them are honestly great. The long pause is giving me hope that he's just managed to draw all level 1s and he can't do anything about it. But uh, that would be a very, very fluky win. Um, I don't know how much this comes down to my misplay earlier. That was an awful play. I can't believe I did that. Oh, I win! Hey! He did not have the cards to stop me. This is why Grimgaunt Predator is a very nice card. Um, just for funsies. Oh yeah, Channel Titan would have buffed off that, so that was actually a solid play no matter what. Uh, Grimgaunt, the, mo the mobility, man. It's all about the mobility. So, I won that, but I probably shouldn't have. That was a, that was a scraping in by the, by the skin of my teeth. Um, I hope you learned about not making a video and talking too much while you're playing, because that's what I really learned. Can I 3-0 it? Like I said, I'm pretty sure this is a 2-1 deck. Uh, that might have been my one deserved loss though. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll coast through this last one. Can't believe that play. Embarrassing. So, uh, most valuable player, or MVP as they call it, was obviously the Predator there. Dark Shaper did a decent amount of work. Gemhide Basher is a nice card to have. Always try to grab one of those. Hungering Strike, I, very, I, I don't really use spells very often at all. Uh, that might be a personal preference thing, or it might just be that spells don't work that well in draft. But uh, I recommend against spells unless they're incredible, and I can't imagine any incredible spells. Look, here... It's between a Spectre and a Tarsus, and because I have such a weak level 1, I really want to give myself a chance at level 2, so I'm going to play a Spectre. His mobility also might come in handy. Unlikely, but possible. Grimgaunt Predator I'm very happy with. I want to level, ideally here, a, a Predator and a Shaper. But if I can get a free kill out of the Gloom Reaper, then I will. Uh, maybe I won't. No, I think just shape a predator, no matter what he plays. Unless it's like a Synapsis Oracle. Or a Shagrius. Then I want to play my Gloom Reaper. Cool, that's fine. It's annoying because neither of my cards trade with those, but it's fine. Um, so here I've got the choice of... Ah, see, I should have attacked first. I always forget this. You attack and then move, because it doesn't make a difference... Yeah, attack and then move, attack and then move. That's important to learn, people. Um, it's a question of whether to bash my head against the shape or try to get a free kill from it later. I'm just going to bash. Oh no, I wanted to move first so that my dark shaper would trade with that shard plate. That's okay, that was part of my plan. It actually was. It sounds very unconvincing, but I swear it was. Um, so yeah. Leveling the Predator and maintaining board control for this deck is much more important than potentially getting an out-of-control Predator. At level 1, a Predator is pretty unlikely to get out of control. I would much rather just um, level it. Here I've got some choices, because this guy's most... Unless he plays a Raw or something else to buff it, this guy's probably going to be on one health. So a Wither Frost kills it for free, a Contagion Surge kills it for free. Um... Because I have the Grove Huntress, I'd lean more towards Wither Frost and then buff the Huntress, uh, buff the Banshee to give me a 4-4 on the board. But it depends on what he plays, really. Because these free kills can be really handy later in life. Oh, that's annoying. Damn. Still get a free kill here. Yeah. So free kill and then buff it to have some actual board presence against what looks like a green rush deck. Which is bad for me because this deck is bad against rush decks. Uh, probably Venom Fang to poison that guy and try to slowly kill him and also block 10 damage. Ideally play something with less than 3 attack in Uterra that's pretty likely just so I can get a get a Charnel going. Actually Charnel trades with him so Charnel there if he plays anything with 3 attack. Fingers crossed. Um, ah, damn. He's playing a super rush deck. This is the rushiest rush deck I've ever seen. 
Oh, I think I'm just going to poison the shit out of a deep branch. I won't kill it, but... Uh, <laughs> Holy crap, he's playing very fast decks. So basically if I can survive into play level 2, uh, play level 3 or 4, I've got a fairly decent chance here. Uh, this might be one of those times when a Grimgaunt... Oh my god! He just won't stop. So Grimgaunt Spectre here. Oh my god! I've never seen someone rush this much. Okay, look, at the moment he's dying anyway. And I don't mind taking another 7 damage in order to just have him, in order to have some board presence. So I'm going to chuck him here. And he's going to reduce down to a 3-3, which means my zombie infantry survives. It's all about knowing the cards. Um, it does leave me on 60 health, but he's played some cards that level spectacularly badly. If he moves that Rhyme Horn now, I can eat it with my Grimgaunt. Uh, I can also Epidemic which will hopefully garner me some trades. Cool, don't care about that, because I'm going to kill it before it gets off the ground. What else he got? Ideally you play something here and not something rushy here. Oh, good. Wow, I've never seen someone rush this hard in draft. This is actually crazy. That's fine. So, not only do I clear the board, but I leave myself with three dudes, including two fairly powerful dudes. Okay, can I come back from 51 health? He's got a Pyre Giant. He doesn't seem to have any Ashurian Mystics yet. No, so he's he's really played all of his good cards in level 1. And from here on in, I should be okay. Grove Huntress to buff the Grimgaunt is almost certainly my next play. Uh, and then I'd love to Enrage, but honestly I can't afford to leave any lanes empty because he's playing such a rushy deck. So, yeah, that is that is a good attempt at rushing. I think maybe he saw the Predator and was like, well, I can't survive that, so let's just kill the shit out of him. Cool, that's fine. Uh, look, considering that, I think I'm just going to double buff my Predator and just have uh, Unstoppable Force on the board along with some other threats. Because a 1916 at level 2 is impossible to deal with with any one card, I think. Even two cards is a bit of a struggle, especially... Yeah, so any card he throws in front of it grows my Predator. Um, and if he ignores it, I'm pounding through 19 damage a turn, which I'm very happy to do. Yep, yeah, so I eat that. Unless he... No, I can't, I can't see any card there. Maybe level 2... Uranti, but I think he played his Uranti in play level 2, so it kind of leveled up yet. Cool. So, uh, I'm just going to keep on growing him, I think. Venom Fang's nice, but without a target, I'd, I'd rather level up a Graveborn. I'm doing 30 damage this turn. Yeah, I think this one's mine. Make him bigger and bigger and bigger. 33 damage. So now he has to block a few different cards. That's a pretty crappy hand, but hopefully it's too late for that to matter. Because now he can't even try to rush me. If he tries to rush me, he's ignoring my Grimgaunt. And that spells death. Um, my play here is probably a Tarsus and a Death Seeker, just to keep on to keep some presence on the board. Yeah, I think he's pretty screwed at this stage. What's he playing? He's playing... Green, Red, Tempest Utera, so... He hasn't leveled up a Botanimate. Cool. Cool. That's okay. I still actually survived that. And that's a win. There we go. That was Peter's instructional uh, drafting in Soulforge. It's a 3 0, which I'm very happy with. Let's see what's in my premium pack. Um, as I said in my last video, I'm actually going away for about two weeks, so you won't be able to. You won't be hearing from me for a little bit. You know what would be nice? A Zymus. It's the only card I have none of. 
Come on. You can do it, game. I believe in you. Um, in other news, the program I'm using to record this, my uh, my Mac program has stopped working, so I can't play on the iPad and record it anymore. I tried a few times and it came out all squiggly. Uh, the program I use here, what we got? Hey, Drix! I got two Drix now. Very exciting. The program I'm using here also works for live streaming, so I might be trying that when I get back. Uh, I don't know if there's enough people who would be live at the right time, but I'll probably... I think they stay up online, so even if uh, even if you're not around to watch it live, you'll still get to see it later. Let me know any questions you have about Draft in the comments, and I'll answer them in future videos. Um, I'm just going to quickly check. I know I've got some comments. I don't think any of them were questions on my last video, but while I'm here, I will quickly see what they were. I love the vids with Gavin. You two are a great pair. Thank you, Zenray001. Gavin is my cousin uh, who I've lived with over the last, like, 10 years. And we were best friends from when we were about four years old onwards, so he's been there my whole life, and I love him to bits. Uh, yes, Peter's back. I am, but going away again. And Subject X says, remember, a Zymus is not just for Christmas. <laughs> I find it odd you mentioned getting a premium on your birthday, as I managed to as well. That would be lovely if there was like a little Easter egg where they knew your birthday and they gave you a premium pack on it. Um, anything you want to know about Soulforge, drafting, me, the world, anything at all, let me know. I will see you next time. I'm Peter C. Hayward. Thank you so much for watching.